It's Daniel with Music Labs. Uh, in the last video, we went over the open strings as well as working our way up the fretboard. We know how the progression of notes works, what has sharps, what does not, what has flats, and what does not. That being said, that was the first step. Most people tend to start with chords. Chords are easy to remember, but it's best to know how they're made because you can make these chords anywhere on the fretboard as long as you know all the notes. Chords work in a very specific way. They're always laid out with a one, a three, and a five. That being said, I know it's confusing right off the bat. Let's take for instance a C chord. <clears throat> a C is going to contain the one, C. From that C, counting the C as one, you then count up, so C, D, E. E is going to be your third note in this triad. Then the fifth. So keeping in mind that you were already on E for the third, you now need to go F, G. G is going to be your fifth. Now this changes depending on the chord. If you have a major chord versus a minor chord, you have a major third and a minor third. That only changes dependent on the chord and it's by a half step down. This is going to give a minor chord a different tonal than a major chord. Major chords are always happy. You hear them in every pop song on the radio. Whereas minor chords are gonna be used in your more slow ballads to kind of build that tension and give that uneasy feeling inside of the progression itself. Progressions also follow a very standard rule. It's basically the same. Let's say, for instance, you know you're in the key of C. We'll see major. They're also going to follow these counting rules to figure out your chords. So if you were to be playing C and you wanted to do a 1-4-5, well, it's easy. You come to the fretboard, you're playing C. Well, your next one is obviously going to be an F. And then your fifth from that fourth is going to be... G. Once you learn how to make these triads, how these chord progressions work, you're going to learn basically the talk that every musician will use. You ever get up on a stage, hey, we're in a 1-4-5 B flat. Boom, you instantly know. This is going to take a lot of practice and memorization skills to get this down. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and show you the basic open chords. Not all chords are constructed the same. Sevens, sharp nines, diminished, augmented, suspended, they're all different. But once you learn the basic chords, the difference in the chords is just a matter of knowing where you are on the fretboard and what notes to play depending on the triads. So we're gonna start from the very beginning of the alphabet of music. We're gonna be starting with the A. A open chord in standard tuning, which is, you know, your E, A, D, G, B, E. It's very, very simple to play. Now, the proper way to play it is going to be taking your ring finger, or, wow, middle finger, placing it on the second fret of the D string, like so. Then your other two fingers, your ring finger and your pinky finger are going to follow suit all in the same fret. That's your A. I'm a little out of tune. So this is going to be your A open chord. Second fret for all of these fingers, but you're going to be doing it on the D string, the G string, and the B string. That is your A major. To make this minor, you just want to take this third and make it flat, which then moves your ring finger down, taking the pinky off to the first fret of the B string. Now those are very, very easy open chords. The chords do get a little more difficult from there on. Now I don't play B ever, 
as an open chord. I don't like it as an open chord. So I'm going to show you a bar chord for the B. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to get to that second fret on the A string, which is your B, you're going to lay this finger flat, just like so. The other finger doesn't have to be on it. And then you're going to take this finger, place it on the fourth fret of your D string, and then go below with your pinky on the following string down, which is your G string, following suit in the same fret, the fourth fret, and you'll go ahead and play. So barring laying this down and pressing on the tips of these fingers, you get this. Simple. To make it minor, you just add a finger on the B string in the third fret, you add your middle finger. Moving on. <clears throat> and if I'm moving too fast, feel free to pause the videos. Your C, we talked about it earlier. Your C is going to just go ahead and be a C, E, and G, as well as followed by an octave C. So to do that, you start on the third fret, place your ring finger right here, follow suit, going back one fret, place your following finger on the next string down the D string. Then you're gonna go ahead and play your open G as well as your index finger being on the first fret of the B string, which makes it a C major. <clears throat> Minor, you would just move your third, make it flat, simple. Moving on from there, we now have our D. D is a very fun, easy chord. You're going to go ahead and go to your G string. You're going to be playing on the second fret with your index finger, like so. <clears throat> then you're going to go ahead and take this finger, your ring finger, place it on the third fret of the B string, and then your other finger follows suit from the first one, but down on the E string in the second fret. And you get this. Now to make this a minor, it's a little different. The chord shape changes ever so slightly. Basically, you're going to rearrange your fingers because it's physically impossible to slide this finger down without everything moving. You're going to play first fret <clears throat> on the E string and then leave the other two fingers in the same position. So you can hear the difference in that one. Moving on, <clears throat> we have our E. E is one of the easiest chords as well as one of the most overly played keys in my personal opinion. That being said, E is going to be on the A string second fret. Your other finger, which is your ring finger or third finger, is going to be on the, <clears throat> excuse me, it's cold out, I have to keep clearing my throat. It's going to be on your D string in the second fret. And then you're gonna go ahead and take your ring finger and you're going to place it in the first fret on the G string. You get this chord. Now to make this one minor, all you do is lift up. And I know you can tell the tonal difference there. Moving on, we're running out of chords. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and be playing a bar chord F because I also do not like teaching a lazy F to people. I feel as if the B and the F open chord wise are just lazy and lackadaisical. They also don't sound as good as the full bar chord from top to bottom. So that being said, F, you know that's in your first fret of your low E string. You're just gonna go ahead and bar this entire thing. Make the same shape that you made for the B. Place this finger down. When you're on the top string or the sixth string, your bar chords are inverted from where they are on the A string. So this is your major. This is your minor. Whereas the B, again, minor, major. It's a little different. All you do is take the two patterns, flip them, depending on the string they're on. Then we're going to be moving on to our G. This is the last chord, last basic open chord. There are many chords. 
So G. The easiest way to play this one is to be using your ring finger on the third fret of the E string, coming down to the second fret of the A string, and then placing your pinky an octave up on the other E string, your first string, just like so. That's going to be your G. <clears throat> And then, because I don't like G minor as an open chord, again, I'm picky. If you want to take the time to learn them, I will have a link in the bio with all of the chords in this entire video and how to make the shapes themselves. So hopefully that helps. Your G minor is going to be on the same fret, and you're going to bar it just like you did the F. And these are going to be your basic chord shapes. <clears throat> so just remember, chords come in triads. Your basic chords change into your sevens, your suspended, your augmented, your diminished, your sharp nines, all these crazy chords that you've never heard before. <clears throat> but it's all a process of counting. Once you get the fretboard completely down, as we practiced and started studying from the first video, you're going to be able to make these chord shapes anywhere on the guitar. You're going to be able to be picky, just like I am, and pick and choose which chords you prefer and which chords you prefer to show other people. But like I said, all the chords are gonna be in the link showing you every chord possible to be made. Practice these basic chords and then start to learn the other chord shapes. Now that you know the fretboard, you'll be able to figure out why this is a seven, why this is diminished, why this is suspended. What's the difference between these chords? Like I said, it's all the counting game. So, I'll see you guys in the next one. Remember, keep practicing.